In this video, we'll be talking about interleukins. So this is a high yield video, stay tuned till the end. So in order to understand interleukins and the most important interleukins, this is a quick mnemonic. So this particular mnemonic says hot T-bone stick. It's not a new mnemonic, it's pretty popular. So hot stands for fever, and that is corresponding to IL-1. IL-2 basically stimulates the T cell, and this is basically the T-bone mnemonic, basically. Three, IL-3 stimulates bone marrow, IL-4 stimulates IgE production, and IL-5 stimulates IgA production. Also, IL-6 stimulates the acute phase protein production, and it's also involved in inflammation. So this particular mnemonic is really important. But in this video, we would not be limited to this mnemonic. We are going to look at this process in details in next 10 minutes. Stay tuned. Okay, so what are interleukins? Interleukins are type of cytokine molecules. So what are cytokines to start with? So cytokines are molecules that help immune system to communicate among themselves. So basically the way a neutrophil can possibly communicate with a macrophage, let's say, is via <coughs> interleukins or let's say cytokines. So this is kind of like a molecular walkie-talkie. Okay, so cytokine is a big umbrella term. So there are many cytokine form families like interleukin, hematoprotein family, interferon family, tumor necrosis family, interleukin 17 family, and chemokine family. So the way we can understand interleukin, it's basically one of the family member of the broad cytokine family, right? Okay. So the way interleukin can possibly work is the following. So basically, they can show autocrine, paracrine, or juxtacrine signaling. Imagine this is the cell, and this can secrete some interleukin, and that can basically be uh, received by another cell in the near vicinity. This mode of operation is known as paracrine operation. Also, the same cell which secretes the interleukin can respond to itself. It is known as autocrine mode of uh, inter interleukin signaling and more rarely cells these cells that particular blue cell can secrete something that can move via the bloodstream and can uh, reach a cell in a distant organ and that is known as endocrine mode of signaling but endocrine mode is more rare in this particular video we would get examples of all these operation mode but the thing is the operations are kind of similar so there are induction of induction stimuli that kind of stimulate our immune cell to secrete interleukin. So basically there are specific genes in the cells that produce interleukin. Upon receiving the stimuli or the correct stimuli at correct time, interleukin gene expression happens and interleukin is produced. Once interleukin is produced, it is secreted and received by a nearby cell. And in the nearby cell, via specific receptor and ligand pair, it would evoke a cytosolic signaling pathway that lead to activation of many genes. These genes can change the functionality of the cell. It can also change the fate of the cell, etc. So this is the overall framework of interleukin action. So let's talk about the features of interleukin responses. There are distinct features. So interleukin can show pleiotropy, that means one particular interleukin might have multiple function. And good example is IL-4. IL-4 can act on B cell, T cytotoxic cell, and mast cell. And in each of these cell type, the response is different. For example, in the B cell, it lead to proliferation and differentiation. In T cytotoxic cell, it lead to activation and differentiation. And in mast cell, it promotes proliferation. So you can see that Interleukin-4, it's one interleukin, but it has multiple function based on context. That brings us to the pleiotropy point. The next point is redundancy. Sometimes multiple interleukin might have similar function. For example, IL-2, 4, and 5 kind of have one similar function. All can act on immature B cell and lead to its proliferation. So different cytokines, different interleukins has common function. This is called redundancy. There is also synergy. That means interleukin-4 and interleukin-5 are examples which work sometimes hand on hand and act on B cell and lead to IgE production sometimes. Also there is antagonism. Let's say there is an activated T cell. It secretes interleukin-4 and it 
its action on the B cell is countered by interferon gamma. So another particular cytokine can inhibit the action of one particular cytokine and it prevents the IgE production. So now we understand all the regimes by which interleukins can work. Now let's get back to the overall uh, uh, mnemonic. So now we are going to look at two important cytokines, IL-1 and IL-6. So these two interle interleukins, which are one class of cytokines, are important in context of inflammation. So IL-1, 6 and TNF-alpha, these are very well-known pro-inflammatory cytokines. So who secretes these inter interleukins? It turns out dendritic cell, macrophages, neutrophils can secrete all these interleukins. So, so there are basically IL-1 alpha and IL-1 beta subgroup. In a different video, we would have a detailed discussion on how interleukin-1 family works. Anyway, so IL-1 evokes inflammation and induce fever. IL-6 stimulates acute, acute phase protein production. And uh, sometimes there are other uh, functions of these interleukins. Anyway, what we need, really need to understand that these two important cytokines, IL-1 and IL-6, are, made, uh, are involved in fever and sepsis. Just like we talked about the pro-inflammatory cytokines, things that evoke inflammation, these are some interleukins which prevents inflammation. Interleukin 10, which is secreted by the T regulatory cell, actually prevents the activation of T cells. Or it can kind of like balance how much T cells would be activated versus stay in a steady state. So basically, these are anti-inflammatory cytokines. Also, uh, basically, they can act on macrophages and dendritic cells to prevent inflammatory responses. Now we'll talk about IL-2, 3, 4, and 5. Interleukin-2 is really, really important in context of T cell activation. Um, basically, interleukin-3 and 4 stimulate Interleukin-3 stimulates bone marrow stem cell niche. Interleukin-4 stimulates IgE production. F 5 stimulates IgA production. So the class switching is kind of triggered by IL-4 and 5. We'll come to that. But let's begin with IL-2. IL-2 plays important role in TH cell activation. TH cell activation requires three signal. Signal one is basically MHC bound peptide versus TCR interaction. Signal two is basically CD80 and CD28 interaction. But the most important autocrine signal, remember I talked about the autocrine signal regime by which interleukins work. This is one example. IL2 secreted by T cells itself work on uh, IL2 receptor present on the T cells. And this provides the signal 3 for activation. So once activate, activated, it would re-enter the cell cycle and it would increase in number. It would proliferate. Now let's talk about the context of B cell. So T cells kind of activate B cells and uh, this requires specific interaction like TCR-MHC interaction, CD40, CD40 ligand interaction, etc. Right? So once a B cell is activated, what would happen? It would proliferate and eventually activated B cell would undergo affinity maturation, somatic hypermutation and class switching. So basically it would differentiate into plasma cell which produce specific subcategory of antibodies. If you want to know uh, about any of these procedures in detail, the video would be in the i button. But anyway, we are talking about the class switching. Class switching is actually triggered by interleukin. That means interleukin dictates which class of antibody would be produced by a plasma cell. So here is a naive B cell. It has generally membrane bound IgM or IgD. Now basically, here is plasma cell which has the capability to secrete all possible antibodies but it doesn't secrete all of them. Subcategory of antibodies is secreted by one type of plasma cell. So it turns out if a naive B cell is stimulated by interleukin 4, then it would secrete IgG, so it would lead to the production of IgE and Ig1 category. If it is stimulated by TGF beta, it would lead to IgG2B and IgA production. If it is stimulated by interleukin 5, it would lead to IgA production. So basically, all these polarizing uh, interleukins dictate what type of plasma cells would be produced and what would be the outcome in terms of their antibodies. So class switching, which is uh, important for different type of antibody production, is really dependent on 
uh, the interleukin signaling. Okay, each of different type of subcategory of T helper cells secrete different interleukins. For example, uh, here we can see there are four different types of T helper cell. Th1 secretes interferon and TNFs. Th2 secretes interleukin 4, 5 and IL-13. Each has a dis distinct function. T regulatory cell secretes anti-inflammatory cytokines, IL-10 and TGF-beta. Or Th17 cell secrete another type of interleukin known as interleukin 17A, which is also inflammatory in nature. And it is known for many disease contexts, including multiple sclerosis. Anyway, question is, how different types of T helper cells are generated? It depends on, as we are speaking about, the different type of interleukin stimulation. Also, it depends on the pathogen, polarizing cytokine, and the transcription factor network. All these three factors combine to decide which subtype of T helper cell would be produced. So you can understand development of these different subtypes require interleukin function. So let us take a simple example. So here is a starting point. Here is CD4 positive T helper cell. And the terminal fates are, let's say, TH1, TH17, T regulatory cell, TH2 cells, etc. So there are external influences which trigger the lineage towards these ones. And these external influences are actually nothing but the interleukin combinations. For example, the external interleukin IL-12 and interferon gamma actually triggers the transcription factor T-bet. It's a master regulator. It would activate the program that leads to the TH1. Similarly, TGF-beta and IL-6, TGF-beta and IL-2, all of these lead to different different combination of master transcription factor, which lead to the production of a gene expression module, ultimately giving rise to a terminal state. So now we can appreciate how polarizing cytokines especially the interleukins, can dictate cell fate in the immune system. Now, all these are also interlinked with the nature of in infection. Why is so? Because let's say there is a viral infection in the body. So the viral infection is detected by a specific type of toll-like receptor in the uh, dendritic cell. Dendritic cell would actually uh, secrete specific polarizing cytokine. So if it's a viral cytokine, it would secrete a type of uh, uh, kind of like a interleukin. If it's a bacterial or helminth infection, the type of interleukin would be completely different. For example, viral infection lead to production of IL-12. So that push the fate towards TH1. Also, helminth infection triggers the formation of IL-4, which push the lineage of T cells towards uh, TH2 subtype. So sometimes antagonism happens between these different type of interleukin and all it's also context dependent and the context is governed by what type of infection happened. It turns out the, um, <clears throat> the two opposing fate are counteracted by each other's present and this particular schematic depicts it very nicely. So how these differential outcome at a molecular level is achieved? It's via utilizing different signaling modules. For example, STAT4 is underlying the IL-12R, whereas interleukin-4 receptor operates via STAT5, STAT6. So obviously, the type of genes that would be transcribed would is completely different. So this is how two different outcome can be achieved based on the type of infection as well. So I hope this uh, kind of give you a good understanding about it. Now we'll talk about three important uh, uh, cytokines which are very important in context of exam. Interferon gamma, it stimulates macrophage to kill uh, phagocytosized pathogen. It inhibits differentiation of TH2 cells. It triggers inflammation, so it pro promotes TH1 differentiation. And it induces IgG switching uh, in the B cell. Okay, so then there are two important ones. TH2 and TH1. So interleukin 4 as the mnemonic uh, help you to remember. It would 